Welcome to this product 101 on the Sourcing Wizard by Morph for Apps. So approved suppliers and sourcing. What are the problems that are generally out there? Well, you've got a multitude of vendors. You've got sourcing from the right supplier is complicated. You've got blanket agreements there. You could have things like iSupplier Portal also tied into it, the Inventory Master, etc. And then, of course, there's the ranking on the sourcing with the different suppliers. You've got vendor-managed inventory and consignment considerations, as well as other things like capacity and authorizations to deal with. It's really difficult to line up with inventory and procurement. There's a real lack of easy-to-use software out there. The Oracle screens are complicated with a lack of visibility, and there's no easy way to see or set up information. There's really limited mass loading capabilities with multiple screens and tabs and a lot of cost to item introduction and maintenance. What are the business processes that are finding the challenges? We've got large volumes to start with. There's multiple departments and staff and disconnect between the departments. So we have procurement involved, we have engineering, shop floor and manufacturing, as well as the product definition or group to deal with as well. There's a disconnect between the department. There's constant data fixing and challenges, and there's a difficult product onboarding process because it involves so many different groups. Then there's the user interface. Well, just to get your approved suppliers and sourcing sorted out, you've got three different user forms to use, let alone the lower level areas. So in the example of approved supplier lists, you've got up to five sections to deal with. There's no real easy way to view the data. You have a single record view, that doesn't really give you a great picture of what's out there and what you're dealing with with your sourcing information. And you have to navigate through thousands of records. There's also very limited search and update capabilities. Performing updates becomes difficult. So what are the common processes and functions? Well, maintaining data quality, a trusted single source of the truth. It has create and update and sometimes delete functionality for approved supply lists, sourcing rules, assignment sets and sourcing assignments. This is a typical picture of why sourcing is so difficult. We've got the logistics controller and they're wanting to make sure their items being sourced correctly. But they're having to interact with all these different areas, send spreadsheets out and get information back in order to do their sourcing. With more fraps we make that easy. It's all in one spreadsheet. The sourcing wizard. Let's take a look. This is an example of a cut down approved supplier list where we have the ASL item, supplier, and the source documents. And just showing how easy it is to load the information, we're just going to validate this here in the spreadsheet. But how did we get to this stage? Well, let's take you through the spreadsheet itself and how we create those approved supplier lists. So I have a bunch of new items here, and I know who the supplier is for these items, and I simply just paste the supplier information in also know the supplier site. In the case of the second one here, I'm not quite sure. So I'm just going to select the site using the user form. And I can simply then just copy that information down to the supplier site for those other items. You notice at the top we have some defaults and it's using the defaults to help us build this. So we don't have to put in our type of our source document, etc. It automatically defaults that for us. We're putting in our purchase order number here and the line number. So ideally you have the information at hand for the purchase orders and the lines. In this case here I'm just going to put the purchase order numbers in and assign those to the line items that I'm trying to create with this proof of supplier list. Once we've done this we can just validate the data. So we're just going to choose the validate all option here. Now you don't have to validate before you upload, you can do the upload option as well, and that will then do the upload and validation in one step. And if we go across to the left, we can see all the records are valid. So now we'll go and run the validate and upload. And when this completes, it actually calls Oracle's API and interfaces the data directly into Oracle. Now let's go and create a new sheet. And in this new sheet, we're going to use this to create a new source document and update our ASLs from being new to approved. So we'll copy the information that we've created with the other ASL items and we'll simply use the download using sheet option here to pull the data back. And of course this is standard Excel so you can change the width of columns etc if you wish. 
We're using the user form here. Obviously, we don't have to. So we're changing that status to approved on all of these. So for a couple of these ASLs, we're going to change the source document information. For the first one here, we're going to add a different blanket agreement. And for the next one here, we're going to delete this. So we want to remove this blanket agreement from the ASL. And we simply press Upload. And it successfully loaded those two records. If we wanted to do the others, we'd simply do an Upload All or Upload Selected on the other records to make those approved as well. Now I'll introduce the functionality to create a local ASL. I'll also show how error messages show within the wizard when you go to validate and upload data with an invalid value. In this case, we'll have an item that is not part of the M1 organization. I'll also remove the ASL ID because that's tied to the parent one at the global level. And we'll set the status of these to new. We'll also remove the source documents. Here we'll simply upload the data once we set our ASL action to create. And you'll notice the last line item is invalid. In this case here, I'm just going to change it to a valid one. You can see now how we can load that last line item, and that gives us three accepted records. Now let's look at creating a local ASL with source documents. First we'll take some items from up here, and we'll change the organization and set the mode. We'll then change the supplier and copy that to put all three records. And we'll remove the ASL ID as that points to the ASL ID for the global one. We'll change our purchase order number here. And by chance the line numbers line up as well. We'll get rid of the status information and simply upload the records. And now we've created a local ASL with a different source supplier and source document. And we can verify one of the items here to see the ASLs that are associated with it. And if we download this, we'll see the ASL at the global and at the local level. Now using a full sheet for the ASL, we're going to look at adding some of the other attributes to the ASL. In this case here, we'll start with the supplier scheduling. So what we're going to do is we download our item that we want to look at. Of course, you can download multiple items, not just one. We're going to put in a purchasing unit of measure. And here we're going to use the user form, because we're not quite sure about the values we want to put in. So we can find our scheduler. And then we can just use the simple yes, no, LOVs to pick values. We can also look at planning constraints, if you wanted to add one in and you can add in minimum order quantity and fixed lot multiples, etc. in the inventory tab. So you can add a lot more information to the ASL. So we simply set our mode to update, and then we upload that record. Again, you could do this for multiple records, not just the one. Now let's download that item again. And let's use it as the basis of changes we want to make to some of the other attributes. So here we'll change the supply scheduling to yes. And then we'll add some authorizations as well. Again, the user form is here for you to use. You don't have to use it. You can simply type the data into the spreadsheet. And we simply upload the record. And it's that simple to change an authorization. We can just download the global one here, and we can change some of the other values as well. So if we look at this in the V1 organization, which is global, we can look at our capacity and our tolerances. We set our record to update. and it's loaded.
Now we're going to grab a separate item here and show you how you can update not just those tolerances but the capacity at the same time. So we'll grab the capacity and we'll put that in and we'll put a tolerance in as well. As per the other loading, you could do this for multiple items and ASLs at the same time. And that's a brief rundown of the ASL functionality with the Sourcing Wizard by Morph Wraps. We're going to have a look here at the Sourcing Rule creation and update process. On the sheet we have the Sourcing Rule, Effective Date and Shipping Method. And here we'll just upload the data and you'll see how quick and easy it is to create sourcing rules. We've also got an error on the last record just to show you how the validation works. So you'll see all the records apart from row 39 will load. So we need to fix this error. There's two ways of doing it. You can manually do it in Excel or we could use the user form. In this case here we use the user form and that'll provide us with the correct list of values. So we see here that M1 is the only organization we're allowed to use. So now that that's valid, we simply just upload the record. And that's complete. Now let's create a new sheet, and here we'll do some updates to some sourcing rules. I'm not quite sure the sourcing rule name, so I'm just going with anything that begins with SR in the M1 organization, and it's got a 22 at the end. And you'll see this was brought back seven sourcing rules for us. In this case here we're going to change the description on the first line item. And we'll set that to update. We're also going to change the shipping information here. In this case we're going to buy from a supplier. So we select our supplier and we'll add a supplier site as well. Now we want to use that same supplier for some of these other records. We simply use Excel copy and paste functionality. For the last three records we're just going to change the source type to transfer from another organization. In this case we'll choose M2 and we'll copy that to all three records. Now we set a default in the shipping action because we want to update all of these records. This saves us having to put it in row by row and we simply press upload. And if we look to the left here we'll see all of these changes have been accepted. And that's the basics of sourcing rule functionality in the sourcing wizard. On this sheet we have the assignment set and the assignments. As you can see here it supports the category organization, global, item org and item assignments. So we're just going to upload this selection here. On purpose as previous examples we have with this wizard we have an error so you can see the wizard in action and dealing with errors. So in this case here we have a customer that's invalid. So we simply pop the user form here to try and find a valid customer. We've obviously got the name incorrect here. So we can either do a double click or select it from the menu. So here we'll just change the customer and select it from the list along with the customer site. And that data is now valid. So when we perform our upload here, all the records will now load. Now in this case we're assigning to an existing assignment set. You can create assignment sets as well if you wish. Next thing we'll do is we'll take some items here that have been assigned to the M1 organization at the item org assignment and we'll download these. If these are multiple assignment sets they'll come back for multiple assignment sets too. But in this case there's just one. And what we want to do here is we want to actually change the sourcing rule that's associated with this assignment. First we'll change the mode to be update and then we'll use the user forms again to find our sourcing rule. Of course we don't have to use the forms, we could just take that. we could just type this value in. And we'll use that same sourcing rule for all three records. And we simply upload. 
And that's it. It's that simple to assign your sourcing rules.